Hi, this is Matthew Pose with Audioholics. So it's around 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, and I am uh, stepping away from my normal work for a little bit because I'm anxiously awaiting the arrival of the new Polk Audio Legend L800s. They should be arriving hopefully any moment now, and I'm hoping to capture at least some of their entry. These 350 pounds worth of monolithic speakers are going to be entering into my house and down a fairly, fairly narrow stairway into the basement uh, and then into my theater, and then we'll have time to evaluate what they're like. But uh, hopefully this will be a good preview for you all. Pretty excited. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the L800's features to give you a sense of what the speaker is like. When you look at it, to be honest, it probably will look to you like a very large tower, but you can break it down into essentially a bookshelf speaker sitting on top of a subwoofer. What you've got is a one inch ring radiator tweeter, and uh, Poke Audio has been using a ring radiator tweeter like this for a long time. You'll recognize the appearance of it from the tweeters that have been put out by companies like ScanSpeak, FIFA, and Peerless. And here they're uh, utilizing a version that's of their own design, but certainly is related to those tweeters. Uh, the preference for the ring radiator over other one inch dome tweeters that you're used to seeing is that by using this ring diaphragm, the mass is lower, which allows it to ex extend higher in frequency than you would have with a typical dome, while still allowing for a big voice coil, which provides for high power handling. Then you've got about a five inch uh, mid-range driver. You can see that's got this unusual turbine pattern on it. Uh, this driver is used throughout the Legend series. And those uh, ribs are actually designed to strengthen the cone so that the breakup mode happens higher up so that the crossover basically can happen in a cleaner part of the response of the, of the mid-range driver, which improves sound. And the number, the odd number, I think there's seven turbines in here uh, that you see these ribs, are specifically designed to match the way that the modes radiate in this driver so that it maximizes their cancellation effect. Now, below that mid-range driver is a pair of 10-inch woofers. And when you see these things, you're gonna think that these look like subwoofers, and they really do. They've got a big, uh, wide roll surround. It's a big dome-style uh, woofer cone to it. There's a lot of excursion. I'll show you a video while I'm talking about this so that you can see what that looks like of those moving in and out. Basically, you do have the equivalent of two 10-inch subwoofers in each one, which allows the speaker to produce a ton of bass. Now, more interesting for the L800, and it's unique to this model over all others, is the SDA technology. So here what you see is uh, a tweeter in a mid-range, and on the other side you see an identical tweeter in mid-range. Now this happens to be the right speaker, which means that this set right here is actually the set of drivers which are used for reproducing essentially the normal part of the right channel. This other side here actually receives an inverted signal from the other speaker, which gets mixed with the signal from this speaker to create uh, what is projected out to cancel crosstalk. So the way the SDA or stereo, stereo dimensional array technology works is that there are these drivers on the outside of the main drivers, and they're spaced about the same distance as your ears are spaced apart from each other. Those send a signal which help to cancel the sound from the opposite speaker from reaching that ear. So really your right ear is only supposed to be getting sound from the right speaker. Your left ear should only get sound from the left speaker, but in practice what happens with two stereo speakers is that your left ear gets sound from the right speaker and your right ear gets sound from the left speaker, and that's called crosstalk. The stereo dimensional array cancels a portion of that, enough of it that it creates a sound that's more like headphones, except for that it's out in front of you. 
And the benefit of that is that it creates a very large wide soundstage. Essentially, it causes these two speakers, almost no matter how close they are together, to create a sound image that is even wider than the boundaries of your room. And so the stereo imaging from these speakers will be better than anything you've heard from any other speaker. It is sort of like headphones in the sense that you have no crosstalk, and so the, the image can be as wide as it can be. But it's different because it is out in the room, as I said. So the image is no longer in your head. It's actually out in front of you. Um, now, this video is not a review, but I just will mention that we listened to these uh, and honestly kind of approached this thinking that it might be a bit gimmicky. But we're surprised to find that the effect is very pronounced and very obvious. So uh, the crosstalk cancellation that Poke has put into these and has been essentially uh, utilizing in some of their high-end speakers over decades now, it really works. It's effective. Now, in addition to the, the parts you can see here, the stereo dimensional array, the tweeter, the mid-range, the woofers, etc., there are a bunch of parts that make this speaker a top-of-the-line speaker that you can't see. The crossover in this speaker is uh, basically just refer, it's, the name of it is the name of the designer and it is of their own design, but it's a very large, high-quality crossover. Uh, it's a three-way speaker, so the woofers are crossed over at the same frequency to the mid-range drivers and those to the tweeter. Uh, the number of parts count uh, is not listed, but I saw pictures of it and it was a very large number of components, so it definitely appears to be a very high-quality crossover. Now, in addition to the high-quality crossover, there are actually a lot of binding posts sitting on the back of the speaker, uh, only some of which are really relevant. So there's an umbilical cord that goes between the two speakers that plugs into this little port. The umbilical cord is used for the crosstalk cancellation signal. Uh, below that are a set of bi-ampable or bi-wireable uh, binding posts which are used to separate the woofers from the mid-range and tweeter. Now, I, to be honest, could care less about bi-wiring. There's no acoustic benefit, in my opinion, to doing that. But this is a big speaker. It is not all that sensitive. Its sensitivity rating is 87 dBs, and it handles hundreds of watts. Now, with two woofers that are essentially like subwoofers in each one of these, if you really want to get the most bass that these speakers are capable of, given their sensitivity rating especially, my recommendation would be to use a big, powerful amp. So in general, I would say two to 300 watts per channel or more. But if you don't have a big powerful amp and you happen to have one of those receivers which can uh, use channels that you're not utilizing for bi-amping purposes, then you might consider doing that instead. And that might provide you with more power. Now, what I don't recommend because it can create timing issues is using a separate amp for the woofers and your receiver for the tweeters. Uh, or it would be the mid-range and the tweeters. And the reason for that is that there's no way to compensate for any delay between what's coming out of the receiver amplifiers and what comes out of your other amplifier. And it is not uncommon for there to be small differences essentially in delay, which would cause group delay. It would cause the woofers to probably lag behind the mid-range and tweeters, uh, which would mess up the response and the sound of the speaker. So all that benefit from more power basically wasted by, by something else. Now, beyond the sound features that you can see here, there's a power port on the bottom. You can't really see that, but what that basically is is a very large flared port. And in the center of the port is a big spike, basically, a, a kind of gradually changing, flaring, if you will, cone that helps to smooth the air as it flows out to reduce turbulence. Again, not a review, but just to kind of give you a sense of how effective it seemed to be in my listening test with this, what I noticed was that uh, I'd never heard any port noise. Now, I was doing for this video some tests where I was just running really deep, like 20 hertz tones through it at levels that were high enough to cause audible distortion. And under those conditions, I heard some mild port chuffing, but it was nothing worse than what I've heard from any ported subwoofer. So in that regard, it really seemed to be pretty effective, the technology. The cabinet itself has, in this particular case, a nice walnut wood veneer and uh, it's very rounded on the back, which I did not expect from the pictures. And then on the front, it has this, this kind of triangle pyramid shape. Now, one of the things that I want to try to correct, because I noticed in many of the online forums, there was discussions about why this looks the way it does. So earlier I was talking about the stereo dimensional array technology and how it works. To be honest, this is a, a mixture of things. And part of it is nothing more than appearance. So what happened was when the designers were engineering the speaker, they were trying to contend with a problem that they had had in past designs. All past SDA speakers had a flat front baffle. 
and the technology worked best because of the distance between these relative to the distance between your ears if you did not tow them in. If you did tow them in, it changed the relative distance between these to your ears and reduced the effectiveness of the SDA technology. So the manual always said, don't tow it in. We as consumers ignored the manual and did it anyway. Now, there's good reason to tow in though, which is that tweeters beam as you get higher in frequency, and so aiming the speaker towards you tends to give you the smoothest response for not all, but many speakers, and in this case, the speakers were designed in that way, and it gives you the most high frequency extension. We can debate whether you can hear up that high or not, but that's, that point remains true. So the designers decided to build in the toe angle automatically so that they could control the distance between these, and you as consumers wouldn't be able to screw it up by towing it in on your own. They then had a choice. They could continue this baffle out, and then it would have just had a big wedge, basically, in the top. That would have been fine. The technology would have worked as intended, but they thought that would look funny. I agree, it would have looked funny. So they decided, why don't we fold it back in? And when they did that, they realized something. In order for the crosstalk cancellation to be most effective, it's been known for a while that it can't work up above a certain frequency, say past 10 kilohertz, because what happens is, you get this really phasey response at the highest frequencies where if you move your head even a tiny bit, the crosstalk cancellation effect becomes more obvious in the sense that it starts to fall apart. There's also an issue known as head shadow, which is that the sound hitting your ear from one side tends to, so if the sound is coming at my head basically from the right side here, I hear more high frequencies on this right side than I will on the left side because my head creates a shadow that primarily works at high frequencies. If you aim a speaker away, you roll off the high frequencies. So by folding this back onto the uh, baffle like they did, it places you far off axis from the stereo dimensional array speakers, which creates essentially the same effect as the head shadow. So what originally was done purely for aesthetics actually turned out to have a technological benefit. And you'll see that mentioned in the review. But it's an interesting story how it came about. All right, so I want to so, talk about an interesting feature that I discovered with this totally by accident, and it's something that isn't mentioned much in the manual, but really should be. And so I'm going to bring this up because I don't know that this is widely known. When I first got these speakers, I was using them with a balanced Class D amplifier. Now, what that means, it, this was a fully differential amplifier, which means that the uh, there was not like a single-ended amplifier, the plus and the minus, if you will, of the phase is on one leg. The other leg is a ground, basically. So, so the red, if you will, the red terminal is modulating the signal. The black terminal is nothing more than a ground. In a balanced amplifier, the black terminal is the negative phase and the red terminal is the positive phase and there is no ground. There, the chassis of the amp would be a ground, but the speaker itself is not connected to a ground in any way. For normal speakers, that doesn't matter. That's just a design feature of the amplifier, happens to lower noise, or in the case of the Class D, also provides for some other benefits. But for a speaker itself, it has no effect on its response. In the case of the L800, it actually matters. It matters quite a bit. The stereo dimensional array, array is taken off of the positive side. And as a result of that, if you use a balanced amplifier, you lose six decibels of crosstalk cancellation. So this cannot be used with a balanced amplifier in order to get maximum effect. And to be honest, had this been 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I don't know that that would be a big deal. There weren't a lot of balanced amplifiers out there. Today, there are tons of amplifiers that have balanced outputs. And these differential amps or these balanced amps really are not an optimal match for this. I actually had to go and dig out a single-ended amp I had uh, along with some receivers to be able to use it because the main amp I was using was balanced. The other feature I wanna talk about that I really didn't use, but it's worth at least mentioning, is that the Poke Audio L800 is not only a good stereo speaker, but it was designed to also be able to be used as part of a full multi-channel surround system. And while we at Audioholics are not huge fans of the bouncy house or ceiling reflecting style of Atmos speakers, this does allow for the inclusion of a high quality, supposedly would be tonally matched uh, ceiling reflecting type module. So it goes into the top here, there's like a panel here that you can unscrew. There's an extra set of terminals for it on the back already. And then there you go, you've got Atmos modules. I did not test that feature. Um, it's not something I would use in my own home theater, but I'm sure it works fine for what it is. As I said, Audioholics as a whole believes that you should be using in-sealing, ideally.
all you audioholics, we've got the Poke Audio L800 set up. Uh, they are pretty legendary looking at this point. We've done a little bit of listening to them, uh, but for you to actually get a good feel for what we think of these speakers, you're going to unfortunately have to wait until we finish the review, so stay tuned. Until next time, though, keep listening.